given the resource constraints in a seemingly inexhaustible state space? And even better yet, how do we make that decision when there is somebody working to stop us? So before we get into the particulars, let's examine what this problem even means. Imagine that you are a high school senior about to graduate and go to college. You're about to determine the course of the rest of your life. Your goal is to be successful, right? More specifically, perhaps, your goal is to get a job doing something that you love. How do you get to the end goal of having a successful career that you enjoy? What path do you take to get there? Your decision may be affected by smaller decisions along the way, like where do I want to go to school? What major do I want to pursue? Or how hard will I work? Each of these things is motivated by a perceived value assigned by the value of the goal that the individual action accomplishes. So, if your end goal is to be an engineer, the perceived value of attending an engineering school would be very high, while the perceived value of attending a theological seminary would be very low. The entire conglomeration of possible decisions and expected values can be arranged into a tree that can be stored and evaluated. Now let's add another variable of complexity and pretend that you have an arch rival whose goal it is to kill you and take all of your success for himself. While that may be an extreme comparison for our college example, that's exactly the type of situation we have in a classic game of chess. We call this an adversarial game. One search algorithm used for determining the next move of, of an adversarial game is Minimax. Minimax generates a state space consisting of possible future moves and return to moves value. The root of the tree is considered the maximizing player, whose goal is to make a move which has the highest score. The next level in the tree is viewed as the opponent's state, so that the goal is to minimize their next possible move score. The tree alternates each level until the final, usually predetermined depth is reached, where the value is propagated back up to the immediate next move value. This algorithm runs in a depth first search and is useful for generating an entire state space of possible moves. Minimax is performed in a depth first search manner with the values propagating up in an alternating comparison mode f between the minimizing and maximizing player. So real quick, the 3 is uh, smaller than 17, so for the minimizing player they would choose a 3. And this is repeated up until we find a value for the maximizing player. And we find that this particular branch provided the best move for the player. A different yet similar implementation shows alpha beta printing on the tree as the search continues, which means that certain branches are never evaluated based upon previous knowledge of the generated search space. Alpha and beta represent the lower and upper bounds respectively and initially are initially set to negative and positive infinity. The point is to remember that the maximizing player looks for a maximi maximum lower bound while the minimizing player looks for a minimum upper bound. As the tree generates alpha and beta retain a boundary for future values. If a value falls out of the bounds for the specific player then the rest of the branch can be ignored. Alpha beta runs in much the same way except now the maximizing player looks for the maximum lower bound alpha while the minimum looks for the minimum upper bound beta and uh, based on alpha and beta we will fill in values that constrain our future branches and if we do find a value which exceeds alpha or beta then that branch can be then trimmed off or pruned and which also eliminates the search space and efficient and uh, increases the efficiency of the algorithm. It turns out these reasonably good search techniques can and must be improved further for a large state space. If you think about an opening chess game, at depth 10, that is white and black, both make five moves, the Minimax algorithm would have to search over 69 trillion possible states. Because alpha beta search efficiency largely depends on the order the moves appear, the algorithm can search anywhere from the worst case, or maximum, of 69 trillion, to the best case, or minimum, of 8.3 million. However, with truly random move ordering, it is more likely to search 25 billion states on average. While this shows that the alpha beta algorithm technically shaves off a considerable amount of search time, it is possible to be even more efficient. This brings us to the principal variation search, or PBS, which will cut approximately 10% of the states searched by the alpha beta search. But the big question is how does this work? PV search is built upon the necessity of having good move ordering. 
With good move ordering, instead of searching for the best move, you assume that the first move is the best and set up to prove that all other moves are worse. This is done by using a null window search. This means that instead of searching using the traditional window of alpha to beta, we use the window alpha to alpha plus one, which gives a good cutoff rate. This is the big difference between alpha beta with good move ordering and the PV search. However, a problem that arises is what if the assumed best move isn't actually the best move? This is an actual possibility due to the fact that move ordering is not perfect. If we look back to the example of alpha beta, when a better move was discovered, alpha was raised. So with this algorithm, if alpha is increased within the null window search, then the node is searched again with the traditional alpha beta search algorithm. So why does any of this matter? Well, for one, it makes an awesome game. The less time we spend evaluating irrelevant nodes, the more time that we can spend evaluating useful ones. This, essentially, will mean a smarter AI. Also, with alpha-beta pruning, we cut down on the space required to store our entire tree.